It's still gross outside. By gross, I mean it's still covered in snow. Can't get into my garden, but some of you are getting into your garden and or are excited to start your first garden. And I'm here to tell you what I would do if I was starting from scratch. I've done this many a times. I've done this with raised beds. I recently just did this with my front lawn last year. About two years ago, I started one out at the farm. It's a process and it takes time in some cases to get a soil to a point where it's going to work for you or a garden to the point where it's gonna work for you. And I've failed sometimes. I've succeeded in others and I'm here to give you all the tips and tricks. If I was to do it from scratch, what I would do. So first up, I would go and ground. I would not use a raised bed. I would use the soil I have. And the reason for that isn't because it's cheaper. The reason for that is because for millions of years, Mother Nature has done exactly that and she probably knows more than we do. Now, with that being said, I don't agree with pure compost. I don't agree with using potting soil in raised beds. I agree with using potting soil in containers. Don't get me wrong, like small little container scenarios. That, yeah, of course. But outside, in a raised bed, anything over 20 gallons container wise, absolutely not. Use your soil. Now to use your soil, you're going to have to analyze the space. So when you look at the soil or the space that you're utilizing, you need to determine what's currently growing there. And if nothing is currently growing there, how heavily compacted it is. First off, let's deal with what's growing there. Because if you don't, if you have something growing there, you can't actually tell what the structure looks like yet because you gotta get what's growing on there off. So organic route would be to solarize the space. I have a video on how to solarize, so go check that out. But you could solarize the space to start off with. This is what I did last year. And then you would remove that debris. Do not rototill this debris in. It will suck way too much nitrogen out of your soil system. And we're already gonna be battling some weird stuff with a new garden. So compost it and or set it aside to use for mulch in the future. Once you've cleared off as much of that plant debris as possible, you can go into the next step. Now, if you're not into solarization and you're like, I'm not doing that, the other option would be to cut it like super, super close, like weed whip it as close to the surface as possible and or don't shoot me, but I've done it before. Um, Roundup. You can round it up. Yes. You can round it up in the fall. You can round it up in the spring. As long as it's about a month out. That's like the really safe bet. You could probably do two weeks. But um, as long as it's about a month out from when you're going to plant your seeds and or your transplants in the soil system. I've done a video on glyphosate. That's what Roundup is. And the science behind how quickly it is broken down in the soil system because it actually increases. It influxes. Um, it, a lot of microbes. Microbes really take off when you apply glyphosate. There are pesticides out there that you should be much more scared of. Um, any insecticide, that's wicked, wicked stuff. Not to mention, if you're a conspiracy theorist and you have a tinfoil hat, why do they make you pay so much attention to glyphosate? Maybe it's because they don't want you to focus on the gray zones of the world. Just just saying, just saying. That is another option. And then you would just remove the debris. Same way, don't use the debris as mulch. That one you'd have to compost, but the soil itself will be fine. <laughs> Next up, you need to analyze the soil. Now, unless it's sandy, I honestly am gonna say every single soil type, loam, clay, sandy clay loam, all of it, you need to till it. I know, it's horrible. I'm telling you to use glyphosate, and then the next time I'm trying to tell you to till, it's, I'm, I'm a bad person, I know. That is, it's going to help enormously. Now, I have a video on how to fix any soil, sandy or clay soil. Follow the instructions from that video. So I give instructions for sandy soil, I give instructions for a clay soil, I even give instructions on how to determine what your soil is. Very important. With that being said, your soil, if it was a lawn or any sort of space where there was foot traffic, um, vehicle traffic, animal traffic, you're gonna have compaction. And we wanna make sure that that compaction can be alleviated because in some cases, you could have a hard pan below that soil surface. So for example, solazenic soils. I'm not saying any of you are sitting on top of a solazenic soil, however, if you were trying to grow on top of a solazenic soil and you didn't know what was below that, like if you didn't know that was below your soil surface, you'd be 
doing an uphill battle and you'd just be going absolutely insane because you'd be like, what? This isn't working, this is insane. And it's probably because you have a hard pan or I mean, in this case of Solazenic soil, not only is it a hard pan, but it's got some nutrient issues as well. Regardless, that is a great way to determine what's below the soil system and to determine if you have a hard pan, which could affect your roots growth, your plants growth, and it may mean a time in which you need to use plants to reclaim that soil. And there are very specific plants you would use in that case. If you have this, send me a photo on Instagram or join the Facebook group and post photos of your soil. I, so I go in there as much as I can. Keep in mind, I have a full-time job and the YouTube channel and it's spring. So I think every weekend I have a speaking engagement. So I try to get to them as much as possible, but at the very least, people will be able to help you in the, the Facebook group in particular. If you think you have this, please send me a photo. If you had it, I would make a video just on that for you. It would be rare, but not improbable. It is possible. I have seen it twice. Twice I've seen it. You will know if you have it. Trust me, it is shocking. After everything's tilled, after you watch the video on how to reclaim any soil and you followed all the instructions inside of that, you can then add planks or boards or something to walk on. Do not add single rock blocks. Don't do like a block and then that is the place you stand. Do boards, whether that's a piece of plywood that's cut and kind of set out or two by fours or whatever the case is, but line your rows with what the, the wood. The reason for this is because when you go to walk on that soil surface, it's going to distribute your weight. This is going to prevent compaction and compaction, while when you step here, you're thinking, oh, the compaction's just right here. No, the compaction goes around and down. And over time, you'll begin to compact more and more and more. And if you have a clay soil in particular, this is when you're like, nothing grows, all my root vegetables struggle, I can never grow any potatoes. It's, it's literally, the only reason you're having that problem is because you're walking on the soil surface. So please, 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 please. Do not do that. Going forward in the future, what you can do is you can use broad forks in the spaces that you have tilled if you don't want to till again, because tillage tools are expensive to rent. So I would use broad forks every spring and I would reassess the soil structure every single year. Now, the reason why I say that is because if you follow the mineral portion of the how to reclaim every soil video, you should be okay. If you follow the organic side, particularly the sandy soil recipe, you will lose some of the beneficial structures. That is just a given. My dog's like really going crazy in the back. That's just a given because it gravity. gravity. That is actually what it is. Um, gravity, that's, that's my explanation. And well, gravity to an extent, but also microbes will degrade and whatever, because it is organics. And so you'll, you'd have to top that up and you may need to rototill again. Next up would actually be the watering system. So I would have a watering system that allowed me to deep water. I don't have this even yet. I have like the worst watering system ever. It's a combination of hand watering. I know, insane. And then like a overhead sprinkler, like it's not, ideal by any means. Mostly because I don't know how to set up irrigation. I'd probably go crazy if I had to do it because I don't know how to do it. Um, but if I had a choice, I would do like a deep watering system. So I would have every bed kind of set up with a way to water and water deeply. So I would water once every four to five days, particularly in the beginning of the season. So you can bake plants that are more drought resistant. And I would deep water for like 30, 45 minutes so that the entire profile is saturated and then I would leave it. And that's how I water and that was the watering. That would be the watering system I would set up. And the last one is trellising. So I would get trellises of all shapes and sizes. I would go up whenever possible rather than down. It does a few things. It uh, helps you manage bugs. It helps you ease of harvest if you have mobility issues. And then it also has um, disease. Like it helps with disease control. It helps with weeding. It makes weeding a lot easier as well. And it also gives you more room just to plant and grow. So trellising is one that even I personally am starting to incorporate more and more in my garden. My front yard garden, all my trellises got stolen this winter. 
Thank you, Saskatoon. Uh, so I do need to replace those. But uh, other than that, yes, that is definitely something I want to add. Now, if you're a new gardener and this is your first year, first year is going to suck. And the geek crew below is going to tell you the exact same story I'm going to tell you. It is around three to five years of a new bed being established before it is like, okay, this is working for me. That goes for raised beds too. The reason for that is because structurally, it's not kind of settled out yet. Uh, nutrient wise, it's not quite, you know, perfect. Even just root microbe rhizosphere wise, it's not, it's not there. It's not gonna be right off the bat. So be patient. Your first year is gonna be horrific. Your second year, you're gonna be like, oh, that was marginally better. The third year, you're gonna be like, okay, perfect. This is starting to work. And then after that, up until the fifth year, you're gonna see just progressively better results. So, but the first two years do not get discouraged. It's very normal. What would you do if you had to start over from scratch? Let me know in the comments down below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.